Well, good evening. I want to welcome you folks to the first of five series of Introduction to the Reams Biological Theory of Ionization classes. These classes are for lay people and not for professional people. And we make no claims in these classes for anything medical. And so, that, but these classes are mostly for your entertainment. We want you to look upon this as a relaxed entertainment period of study on various health principles as set forth by Dr. Kerry Reams in his program that he calls the Reams Biological Theory of Ionization. Now that sounds like a big complicated word and it's a nice sounding word but it's very simple. Biological merely means a biological device. You are a biological device. So is a plant. So is an animal. And so uh, the ionization merely means the electrical transfer of energy from uh, minerals to your cells. Every process in the human body is electrical. All of your food assimilation into the cells is done through ionized mineral particles. Now this program has been in existence for many years. I was introduced to it about 11 years ago. And I will tell you briefly how I came into the biological theory of ionization. My name is Jim Daly, as all of you know, and of many people who are listening to these tapes are familiar with my company. This program is not to sell vitamins and minerals. It's not to sell any product. It is to acquaint you with the biological theory of ionization and what it's about, and then Dr. Reams' theory. Now, 11 years ago, I believe I was about 50 years old at that time, and I thought that I was all washed up in life and through. I hurt all over. My feet hurt so bad I couldn't walk. By the noon each day I was uh, virtually crippled because of crystalline uh, particles called gout, Ure uh, urea crystals and so forth in my feet, and they felt like they were on fire. My wife would tape my feet, and I had special shoes made, and I would hobble around, and by noon I would thought I was through. And on top of that, I had hemorrhoids. Now, if you've ever had a real good dose of hemorrhoids, they hurt. You hurt all over. On top of that, I had angina pains. I felt like an elephant sitting on my chest. I could hardly breathe. And my left arm ached. Now, when you get all three of those together, you feel lousy. And on top of that, I just felt bad all over. And so I began to liquidate my factory and I told the wife, she was a nurse, but she hadn't nursed in years. I said, it's about time you're thinking about going back to nursing because I'm washed up. I can't, I can't work. I cannot run my business. For 30 years, I had a factory that made uh, loudspeakers. We had one factory that made the wood cabinets, another one that made the drivers. And I got to where I could not supervise it or run it. I couldn't think of anything, but I, that I felt bad all the time. And when you feel bad, you don't want to do anything. And so I... Uh, just had practically given up. One day I saw a lady walking out of a store with two jugs of distilled water, one under each arm. And I just stopped impetuously and said, do you drink that stuff? And she says, I sure do. I said, why? And she says, you come out to the car and I'll show you why and tell you why. And I went out to her car and met her husband who had had several heart attacks and nearly died. And he had been introduced to this program and apparently salvaged. And she said, if you'll come by the house, I'll give you a book. And then she explained a little bit about the RBTI program. We call it the Reams Biological Theory of Ionization Program. So the next morning I was going to church and I said, well, I'll come by your home on the way to church tomorrow and pick up the book. And I did. I picked the little book up, took it to church with me, and I told the wife to go on in church and I would read this book and come in a little later. Well, just as church was letting out, an hour and a half or so later, I finished the book. And I told the wife, I said, here is a health program. I've been interested in health and read all kinds of literature all my life on health, but nothing worked. I said, here is a program that looks like this old gentleman got something hung together and it works. And so Monday morning, I called up the address and the number there in that book and said, I want to take this course in the RBTI program and the wife says, I don't know, it sounds a little kooky to me. She's a nurse and they're conservative. So she said, I, I, but I'll go along and monitor the course also. 
Well, it cost us $2,500, and that was a lot of money in 1977, to take a course. But we went and took the first week, and then we were enthused. I was able to turn my entire body chemistry around, eliminate my hurting feet, hemorrhoids, and everything in a little over a week. I had a, a virtually like I had been reborn with a new body. And I got rid of my health problems, and I've been going ever since. In fact, in the last 11 years, I do not believe that I have had one day that I have lost from illness of any kind, flu, cold, or anything, and I've worked every day and started new business, and everything has been running much smoother since I learned how my body worked. Now, there's many health programs. You can go into any health food store, any bookstore, and you can find a hundred books with a different health program. And all of them have some virtue. They have worked for somebody or they wouldn't be printed. They wouldn't, they ditch, wouldn't exist if they hadn't worked. One, I'll give you a classic simple example. A few years back, they had a popular little program called the Vermont Doctors uh, Vinegar and Honey Diet. And there was a book written about it. Now, some people tried that and it make, made them feel better. Otherwise, it would have never been a program. Now, suppose you went on the honey and vinegar diet. Now, if you happen to be a hypoglycemic or low blood sugar, and you ate some honey, your energy level would come up temporarily. If you had a very alkaline body and took some vinegar and adjusted your acid alkaline balance, your pH, and got a little nearer normal, your energy would come up some more. So if you happen to be a low blood sugar person that was very alkaline, then the vinegar and honey diet would make you feel terrific and you would think a miracle had happened in your body. But what would have happened had you been a virtual a borderline diabetic and had a very acid body and you took the honey and the vinegar and which drove you more acid and raised your blood sugar to a dangerous level, it would probably nearly have killed you. But enough people were in the other category to make it a, a plausible thing and it helped them. But we need to know what our body chemistry is and that's where Dr. Reams developed the RBTI program. Now we're going to go through probably a hundred different subjects in the next five classes and cover things that you have never heard of before. I have written the formula on the board here of the, the formula that Dr. Reams developed. This is a 1.5, which represents your total carbohydrates, we call it sugar, as read in a refractometer. But it is different reading than what you would read in the conventional doctor's sugar level where he does a blood sugar test. This is the total carbohydrates in the urine. The 6.4 over 6.4 is the acid alkaline balance, or your pH, of the urine and the saliva. The 6 to 7 C is your total salts, S-A-L-T-S, -S, plural. We're not just dealing in the body with sodium chloride salt, but with about uh, several different types of salt. Anytime you have an acid and an al uh, acid and a alkaline substance that neutralize each other, you have a salt residue. So we're talking about the body salts here. The .04 M is the total dead cells thrown out in the urine, uh, the albumin, and it's 40,000 parts per milliliter. The three over three is your ammoniacal or your nitrate and ammoniacal nitrogen level. Now this is a fascinating subject when we get into the nitrogen level in your body. We're going to show you how that this causes this, some of these uh, unforeseen heart attacks that people have and uh, how that it's not been picked up on by a lot of people of the importance of the nitrogen level in the body and we'll cover the foods that shoot your nitrogen high and we'll cover all of these things in more detail as we go. We will barely touch on them this evening. Now over here we have eight points of health, very simple things. Pure air, sunlight, water, diet, abstemiousness. I could have put a short word in there but that's a nice word, abstemiousness and exercise, rest, and TDP, which we will not tell you what that is tonight. But all of these are very simple things. But before we're through, you will see that it's a very complex 
formula. It's kind of like Einstein's E equals MC squared. That sounds like such a very simple formula, and yet you can spend a lifetime studying E equals MC squared and go into all fields of science. There are literally thousands of parameters in this simple formula which you could spend your lifetime and you can get into atomic physics, you can get into chemistry and all kinds of things if you want to go into the depth of this. But we're not going to cover it that deep because this is for ordinary people and not for the technical minded people. Now health is something that almost everyone has on their mind and it was our human body was originally designed to live forever. It was not, sickness is an abnormality, but today we look upon illness as a normal thing, but it isn't. Health is what is normal. Sickness is the abnormality. Uh, I, this is not a religious meeting, but I quote a scripture once in a while. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 2, uh, 26 verse 2, says, the curse causeless shall not come. <laughs> when we have curses of sickness, these things don't come without a cause. There has to be a cause for every ailment. There isn't something that you're destined to have. It's something that has snuck up on you as your saying goes because you didn't know something. My people perish or are destroyed for lack of knowledge, God tells us. Then in uh, J uh, 3 John verse 2, it tells us there, Beloved, I wished above all things that you prosper and be in good health. Now God wishes us to prosper and be in good health. That's a, that's a pretty good blessing to have pronounced. Everybody wants to prosper and be in good health. We spend billions of dollars every year trying to be in good health and we all try to prosper. And so that is God's goal for us. But we need to understand some principles here of, of health in order to have this blessing. Now. As I got into the biological theory of ionization, I took many classes. In fact, I spent a year following different people around the country taking technical courses into the biological theory of ionization. And I found out many interesting things. Tonight we're going to particularly study the electrical nature of pure air. What is pure air? Now you hear a lot today about air pollution and water pollution and various things and we're going to cover all of these. Tonight we're going to kind of hit a little heavier on the pure air. What is pure air? Now pure air has a negative electrical charge on it. A negative electrical charge. But we have thwart that in everything that man does. When automobiles go down the highway giving out all kinds of carbon monoxide, nitrous oxide and all of these things, it knocks out the electrical charge off the air and puts a positive charge on it. When you breathe positively charged air, the little cilia, the little hair-like things in your lungs cannot vibrate. They cannot grab oxygen. They slow down. And you, you are oxygen starved then. And so we have many things. Uh, our air conditioning system, central air, draws out the electrons out of the air and positively charges the air. Uh, central heating systems positively charge the air. We do not touch the earth anymore. We are insulated from earth. We drive around in our cars which have rubber tires and we're not insulated uh, or we're insulated from the earth. We can't get any electrons. As we drive down the highway just the wind blowing over our car deionizes it and puts on a positive charge. After you drive a while, you're just suddenly bombed out. You can hardly go. You're sleepy. You wonder why you get sleepy. Then you go to church and you get sleepy. Why? We also find that synthetic fabrics, all churches use nylon carpets. The pews are coated with nylon carpeting. Nylon carpeting and all synthetic fabrics that you're wearing here tonight. Most everybody probably has a synthetic fabric on. All synthetic fabrics have a negative charge which attracts around them in a, like a halo positive ions which are the bad guys and shuts your oxygen off. So you sit in a public meeting and your oxygen gets shut off, your little hair like cilia and your throat slow down and the first thing you know you're sitting there bobbling half asleep. You're just, just out of it. And so this happens all through our society. We are a positive charged society. All of our new buildings are built on ceramic insulators, concrete insulated from the earth. 
Then we put in plexiglass and, and plastic everywhere. We put in synthetic carpets all over them. And we wonder why people are walking around like zombies, half asleep, and they have to have the mid-morning coffee break, and then the uh, mid-mid-morning coffee break, and before the day is over, they have how many cups of coffee to keep going? Have to have stimulants of all kinds to keep going. And so we're breathing negative or positively charged air almost everywhere we go. And so it shuts off our oxygen. Now we need oxygen for our cells to, to function properly. But oxygen is a two-edged sword. We have what we call super oxygen, which is generated in the body and, and it generates free radicals, which are positive charged chemicals. Now free radicals, if you read Science Magazine, are being attributed now to almost every degenerative disease. And we're going to cover a lot about free radicals as we go down through these different points of health here. They are positive charged chemicals in the human body that upset all the processes of making minerals go into our cells and making complete cells. And there's many, many ways that these work. We generate free radicals in our colons. You generate free radicals when you heat greases and oils. When you put french fries in those pots at the McDonald's and various places, you have free radicals galore. There's nothing uh, generates free radicals like hot oils. And uh, there was an article in the Charlotte Observer just about two days ago on hamburgers and what happens in a hamburger when it's fried on these grills, all the free radicals and the poisons that are generated. And these are all positive charged materials that come into our body. Our body needs lots of negative electrons or anionic materials to, to function, but our society is set up to give us lots of cationic and positive charged materials which thwarts these things. And there are various substances which can counteract those. Now we wonder why people who smoke cigarettes run into trouble. Uh, and it's an interesting thing. My dad was a one of seven boys in his family. They were all farmers, worked out of doors. They were all heavy smokers, two and a half, three packs a day, plus a pipe at night when they were listening to the radio, wasn't any TV then. But not one of them got lung cancer, not a single one of them. But they had a compensating factor. They were all dirt farmers out during the day, touching the soil, working in dirt, breathing a lot of negative ions in, and the little cilia in their lungs kept working rapidly and bringing up the cigarette junk. I can remember as a, a child hearing my dad cough and cough and cough at night, bringing up this junk that he had breathed, and that saved his life. He did not get lung cancer, though he's a terrific smoker. But wh where are most smokers today? They're sitting in offices and in places of business, sedentary work, breathing positively charged air, plus the cigarette smoke making it more positive charge, and all of this junk and carbon monoxide and, and, and the tars and nicotine staying in the lungs. The cilia can't bring them up. And so those irritants stay there and they get lung cancer because they're not out in this negative charged air. Now if you go out in the woods where there's a lot of trees, you'll have about 3,000 negative ions per cubic centimeter. Cubic centimeter is a little tiny thing. About 3,000 per cubic centimeter in the woods. Pine trees are particularly good about bringing negative ions out. They have needles like little lightning rods and they radiate off negative ions. All trees give off negative ions, but pine trees in particular. Now there's other places where you get lots of negative ions. If you go to visit a waterfall where the water's rushing down and anytime you violently break up water, you generate negative ions. You ever go to a waterfall and you feel an effervescence, you feel great. You go to the coast and the surf rushing in and crashing, you feel good. I was down to Myrtle Beach last weekend and I noticed these people out there with these dogs. They had some big Labrador dogs, and those dogs were just absolutely wild. They, they couldn't contain themselves. They felt so good. And it's very interesting. Animals love the beach, and they just, just go wild. And so do kids and people. They, they, they get a lot of energy while they're at the beach. And so you get negative ions there. Now what happens when you get in your shower? What do people do a lot of times in the shower? They start singing. They feel so good all of a sudden. They're getting negative ions in a shower because you're violently breaking water apart. 
when you have a violent rainstorm really hammering it down, you generate lots of negative ions and you feel good. You get an old dreary day when you have a drizzly rain, just a muggy drizzly day, it positively charges the air and you have positive ions and you're depressed. Now when you have a thunderstorm approaching, just preceding that thunderstorm head is a lot of inrush of negative ions. If you were raised on a farm as I was, and we up in the mid in Illinois in the flat country, you could see these thunderstorms coming across the plains. Uh, a few minutes before it got there, this inrush of negative ions would come in, and the little calves and the lambs and the animals would just kick up their heels and run and have a, just just go wild. They felt so good because they had a lot of negative ions to breathe. And so there's, nature provides lots of negative ions for us to breathe. But man comes along and short circuits them. In our ceramic insulated buildings, our automobiles that are insulated from the ground, our central air, our central heat, and all of these things counteract the negative ions. And so people go around in a state of uh, oxygen starvation. And so that is a, just a fascinating subject. Now they even make air ionizers. And I've tried some of these little uh, cheap ones they sell and they don't do much. They don't throw out enough to really help you. And one of the cheapest little old negative ion generators that I have found is these little um, humidifiers that whirl around and throw out a vapor. They violently break the water apart and they generate negative ions practically free, except in damp weather, you don't need all that extra humidity in the house, but in wintertime, when you have a particular trouble, those are nice. I haven't tried these new ones that use ultrasound and generate the superfine mist, but I would assume that they would also generate negative ions. And so your body runs on lots of negative ions and negative electricity. In electricity, negative is the thing that has an abundance of electrons and positive is a starved part. Most things you think of positive having and negative not having, but things got reversed when they first started tinkering with electricity many years ago and they misnamed it and the negative has and the positive has not. And so we need negative electricity to run the body. And there's many ways of getting it. I can remember many years ago hearing about a health spa where they got everybody up early in the morning and they walked them barefooted in the dewy grass. And they didn't understand why. They didn't know, but they just know everybody felt better. So they got everybody out first thing in the morning and walked them in the dewy wet grass barefooted so that they would get in contact with the earth. And when you work with the soil and dig your hands in the soil, you are getting negative electrons charged to your body from Mother Earth, which is the source, the master source of all of electrons. But now some interesting things happen. During the full moon, things do happen. Many people are affected by a full moon. Um, people who work in mental institutions notice a difference during the full moon of mental patients who are on the verge of going over the hump. They go over during the full moon a lot of times. Because as the, during the full moon, the charged atmosphere around the earth changes, becomes more positively charged, there's more positive ions in the air, and there's less minerals in the air. Now you get a lot of your minerals that you use in your body from breathing air. Now you know a plant, take a, a corn for instance, it gets about 80% or more of its nutrients from the air, only about 15% from the actual soil. And we fertilize the soil thinking all the time with all this goodies coming up, but about 80% of the growth of that corn, or 85% of it, comes from the air. And a lot of our minerals that we breathe come from the air. But we're polluting this air now. We're polluting it everywhere by industry. I, I just went to South Carolina yesterday and this big fire that's burning in North Carolina had the whole East Coast so smoked up, but we're smoking it up with automobile exhaust, which is deionizing the air and all kinds of things. You can go up in these satellite pictures and look down and from Pittsburgh and when they had those big smelters going up there, there would be a streak all the way clear to Florida of polluted air coming from up north. Then we have acid rain, which is upsetting the pH balance. <laughs> By the way, in agriculture, this is almost an ideal pH of the soil. 
Your body is remarkably like the soil. Now the Bible tells us that man was made from what? Well, you remember what, what did he say man was made from? He made from the dust of the ground, which is the colloidal minerals of the earth. And so you operate almost identical to what the plants do, the same pH factor. When your pHs are this, you can efficiently pull minerals out of the foods you eat. Now Dr. Reams had an, a remarkable theory and it proves out in practice. He, well first before him was a man named Dr. Northen who discovered that biological things have a frequency and he discovered the frequency of grapes. And he was will, uh, uh, able to do many things with grapes and crossbreeding and hybridization of grapes after he learned the frequency of grapes. Dr. Reams came along and discovered that every biological thing has a frequency. Now I have been in electronics all my life and I still don't understand all there is to know about Doc Reams' theory of frequencies. I'll show you what I know and you don't even have to memorize this. Just remember the principle and it will help you to understand how the food works in your body. Doc Reams discovered that people, Homo sapiens, had a frequency of, and he uh, denoted it this way, point five zeros. The man was two four for man, the woman two six, same zeros. He found that in all the animal kingdom that the male was always, uh, the, the female was always two points higher in frequency than the male. The higher the frequency of any biological device, the more difficult it is for it to assimilate and pull minerals out of the food or the soil. But now here's a the more fascinating thing. You don't even have to memorize this. He found that animals, for instance, a horse, I believe, had a point zero, 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 only four zeros, and a 38 and a 40 for the male and female. But there's a whole decimal point, zero less. The horse had a lower frequency. Then he discovered that plants had still lower frequency of a whole zero left, only three zeros. Now he discovered that citrus plants had, an, or, or like oranges and lemons and so forth, had an odd number. These are even numbers. But a citrus plant is bisexual. It has male and female blooms on the same plant. You don't have a male tree and a female tree. And so it was an odd number, but a decimal point less. Then you come on on down to fungi and you have still another decimal point less. What this is saying, and here's the principle, that human cells are smaller than animal cells. Animal cells are smaller than plant cells. Plant cells are smaller than fungi. Now the larger the cell, and he says this is the time it takes an electron to go around a molecule or one of these cells, the time it takes to go around. Now in a small human cell, this thing is flying around, but it's not traveling very far because it's going around. It's like taking a golf ball here and saying how long it takes an electron to go around that golf ball. Or a basketball over here, how long it takes it to go around the basketball. Or the earth, still bigger, how long it takes to go around the earth. Now let's assume that that electron is just going around one time per second around the golf ball and one time per second around the basketball and one time per second around the earth. The frequency would be the same, but the speed would be terrifically different, wouldn't it? You'd really have to scratch off to get around the earth in a second compared to a golf ball. All right, now the faster this electron is moving, peripherally around, the more it can, like a buzz saw, say, the more it can grab minerals, elementary minerals, out of the ground or food or whatever it is. So it's much more difficult for human beings to grab minerals out of food than it is for a horse. You can put a horse out in a pasture of nothing but grass 
and he'll live all summer and be healthy, grow, be muscular. But you can't do that. You can't live on that grass. You have to have a whole variety of foods and have to be just right and have to, uh, to, to get your minerals out. And you can take a plant and plant it out there and it can pull minerals right out of the raw dirt in a very elementary raw state because its electron is going around at a terrific speed around a big cell and so it pictured as a buzz saw again sawing through a board it can gnaw in there and grab those minerals much more efficiently you can't eat dirt and live but a plant can and so the higher the frequency the more complex the diet he discovered and he began to build his theory around these frequencies now as we get into foods you will see some very interesting things. We will not get into that tonight. But these frequencies are very important. And there's other frequencies besides that. He discovered it there. That this, he called this the Q frequency, which never varies. He says that in a human body, this Q frequency is there forever. And he claimed that he could take a person after they were dead, and even took people who'd been burned up in a fire and took their ashes, and he could tell whether it was a human burned up in that fire or a dog or a cat and, and even male or female because this Q frequency never changes even in your ash. Then he found other frequencies which determined your um, race, whether you were a Negroid or white, whether you were a Chinaman or, or a Caucasian and so forth. He could tell that even. And it was very fascinating the things that he developed from this. And so this whole concept of frequencies was foreign to me. But the, lately there have been many articles coming out in Omni magazine and different science magazines that they're discovering all kinds of electrical frequencies in the body and that modern science is discovering that we are truly a gold medallion home, all electric body, that we run on electricity. And this, this thing was being developed back in the early 1900s medicine was traveling in the direction of, of finding out all the electrical properties of the human body and some fascinating things was developed and about the 1930s we began to drift away from that toward the drug therapy method and by the late 30s we were going almost totally drug therapy but now we're coming around and finding that the electrical theory is valid but very little under, uh, is understood about it. And so Doc built his uh, philosophy on the electrical theory because he was from the old school back in the 1920s and 30s. And since I grew up in electronics, this had a particular interest to me because I knew in my heart that we were electrical people, but I couldn't prove it. And I didn't understand the principles. And I've been studying it 11 years, and I'm not an expert on it at all. I have, I have no, nothing to offer except what I have learned from, from Carrie Reams and the books and the things that I've studied, but I have put it to practice in my life, and it works. It absolutely works. And we're going to, to take this formula and go through it gradually, step by step, and show you how diet works. We'll show you how women require a more delicate diet and a more refined diet than men. They need more minerals. Women use far more calcium than men do. Doc says that calcium is a great, lack of calcium is the greatest cause of divorce in America because it is the electrical conductor in your nerve cells and women use about seven times more calcium or so than men and almost every woman is calcium deficient and she can't control her emotions and nerves as much as men and men have the same problem if they're calcium deficient. And we will show you some interesting things. We'll even sh I'll try to bring a refractometer here one night and show you how we can read from fruit juices how much mi how, what mineral content it has. And I will bring a grapefruit and show you some interesting things on that. And we'll bring pH paper and let you test your saliva pH and see the difference in people. And these pHs determine a, an awful lot on how efficiently that you pull minerals out of your food. A farmer tests his soil and when the pH is way too acid or way too alkaline, he fertilizes it to balance his pH back up. Otherwise, it's all, uh, the, the plant can't pull anything out of the soil. And it's the same way in the human body. If your pHs are off, I don't care how good your food is, you won't get the minerals from it. You'll be mineral starved. Doc says that all diseases are mineral deficiencies. 
You say, now wait a minute here. How can that be? Surely typhoid is not a mineral deficiency. Yes, it is. If, if it wasn't, everybody would catch typhoid. But if you have a disease going around, everybody doesn't catch that disease because many people's resistance to that disease is high because they have the proper minerals in their body. And so they have a resistance. Their immune system is functioning properly. When your minerals are gone, you have no immune system functioning. And so basically all diseases are mineral deficiencies. And so we need to study how to get minerals to absorb in the body. It's not how much food you eat, it's how much food you assimilate, how you grab the minerals from it that counts. And so these things are extremely important. And as we go down through these different points, now we're going to show you next week in our second lesson, we have sunlight. It could be just light. But we're going to show you an hour and 20 minute movie by John Ott on light and its effect on plants, animals, hyperactive children. And it's just absolutely mind boggling about light. And we're going to show you about ionization, about low level radioactivity, which is on everybody's mind now after the thing happened in Russia. We'll show you how that no life can live no life can exist on earth without low level radioactive radiation. It's, but too much of it is bad. We're going to show you how the sunlight causes skin cancer and how it cannot cause skin cancer. And we're going through just lots of parameters. We're going to show you how to get rid of some of these free radicals in the body, how to counteract free radicals in the body, how, and how to counteract a, a lot of the poison. We cannot have a perfect diet. There's no way on earth to have a perfect diet now. First place, our soil is depleted. We're depending on pesticides, herbicides, chemical fertilizers. And so you cannot have a perfect diet. Not even if you're growing organic foods, you can't have a perfect diet. And we're going to go in, we're going to show you how far, why farmers are going broke. So, uh, 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 why they're being tricked by the fertilizer companies into using the wrong substance which shuts their nitrogen off. We're going to have just uh, lots of interesting things here. Now, we don't want to develop too much into our formula here this evening until we get into the other subjects. But in Doc's formula, no number is perfect unless all the numbers are perfect. In other words, if you had a form, if, if you ran a body chemistry test on yourself and you found that you had a perfect 1.5, you were 6.4 over 6.4, you had a 6 or 7 C, and you had a 3 over 3, but you had a 4 M, let's write that a little brighter, you had a 4 M instead of a 0.04 M, you think, well, you know, I'm pretty good. But no, you wouldn't be pretty good. You'd probably be about to die. You'd probably be in a very dangerous situation. If you had a 4M and all the rest of those perfect, you would, you, you would be in a very dangerous situation. Or if all of these were right, but this salt was way up at 20 or 30, you would have a very, very bad situation. Salts are extremely good electrical conductors. Uh, salt, if you take distilled water and put two electrical terminals in it, you'll get no, no electricity passing through it at all. It's a terrific insulator. But you just put a pinch of salt in there and it'll conduct electricity like, you know, just make a beautiful conductor. It does that way in your body. And we're going to show you how salts, and I say plural, as many salts besides sodium chloride that we'll work with in the body. We're going to show you how they affect cholesterol, how they affect the depositing of cholesterol on the arteries, and all kinds of things, and how it affects the muscles of the body. And it's really fascinating, uh, the subject of salts. And so, as we go through, we're going to discuss each one of these points and show you how, when they, the, that they get out of their parameter, what it affects the body. And I think that you will find it uh, quite interesting. Now, there are many subjects that we could cover this evening, but we don't want to boggle your mind with too many things. We want you to grasp the fact that you need pure air, you need a negative electrons, you need to get some oxygen into your lungs each day of pure air, and if you're, uh, if you're a jogger, which I'm not really very um, enthusiastic about jogging, 
But I lived in Charlotte for a year, and I watched these people jogging about 4.30 to 5.30 in the afternoon after they got off work, right down Providence Road, where the bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic, and here were these guys in their suit out there jogging. I thought, oh, what idiots. You know, all these cars blowing out carbon monoxide, nitrous oxide, the air is zero uh, <coughs> negative ions, and they're out there jogging, sucking all that into their lungs, thinking they're doing some health work when they're actually just destroying themselves. And so jogging in the city is, is not a health program at all. In fact, it's just the opposite. If you want to jog, get out in the woods or in the country. Otherwise, don't, don't do jogging. It, it, isn't a, it isn't healthy at all. Then one of the most healthy things is just brisk walking. But you do not want to suck into your lungs impure air. If you work in an office where everybody smokes, you have a bad situation, even if you don't smoke. In fact, the secondary smoke that you breathe is even worse sometimes than the primary. And so I feel sorry for people who are trapped in an office job where everybody's smoking because the air is just completely dead. It is deionized. On the San Francisco uh, Golden Gate Bridge in the afternoon, the ion count reaches virtually absolute zero. When the, all the, about 5.30 when all the traffic is going over that bridge, it just reaches zero. Now, then you wonder why people come home mad and grouchy and fussing at their wife. After you've been in an office all day breathing a negative or uh, positive charged air and then breathing all these automobile fumes. I was through Atlanta recently and I thought I would suffocate uh, in a bumper to bumper club as we call it there. Everybody's uh, exhaust fumes, all these new cars suck air through all the time. Sounds like it's a good idea except when you're in traffic. Uh, fortunately, my new car has a little button I can push temporarily, and it won't suck fresh air through. I can cut that off for, uh, while I'm in traffic. But the other cars I had before always brought that air through, and you would virtually suffocate. And you, and you come home, you're kind of on the grouchy side when you've been zapped all day and uh, uh, coming home and zapped in the traffic. And this carbon monoxide also destroys your red blood cells, causes them to clump together. They can't get through your little capillaries, and it just wrecks havoc through the whole body. Now, in most of our classes, uh, we will not have a question and answer period, and some of them we will. And if you have any questions that you would like to ask without getting too far ahead, we would take a few questions now Do you, uh, from the audience here. Do you have any questions about any of this? Is there anything you don't understand that I haven't made clear? I, I know you can have lots of questions about these frequencies because I don't understand them all either myself. I know they work. I know they work. But any of you have any, any questions now? No questions. I think we will conclude the class this evening at, at this point and we'll see you folks next Tuesday night. this thing. But we will show that next week. I think we will conclude the class this evening at, at this point, and we'll see you folks next Tuesday night.